and 3, 2, 1, boom. We are back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This is uh, your Scratch Dialogue, where we talk about something cool that we thought uh, was cool from the week. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about the original, sure. the original intro, you know, four things we thought were cool from the week, but like, no, we just switched it to one now. Uh, if you're keeping up, um, we posted the online sessions, number six and seven, because those are pretty good. Mm-hmm. I'm actually quite enjoying those. Uh, I don't know about you, but yeah, I really like it. Okay. I like it because there's no like set topic. We just like chill and yeah. then, like talk about whatever, you know, right. or just like watch each other play video games. But yeah, so um, so this topic for the week is probably going to be. Um, I don't know if, like, I guess a bit a quick caveat. I only recently got into like hip hop slash rap music, for since university, I'd okay. say. Because remember oh. when we were kids, like I I really despised hip hop and rap music. Like remember like uh, actually I don't know if you remember, but like uh, Sunshine and like our other friends, they they'd always like watch like 106 in Park. You too, like you liked you liked hip hop rap. Yeah, that's where um, I mainly grew up. I was I was like the only one that that liked uh, the emo screamo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, rock yeah. music. You know what I mean? Oh, I yeah. always put that on, and I just thought it was like kind of funny. Like primarily the reason why I thought it was kind of funny to listen to that is because like we went to like a mm-hmm. like a black Filipino high school, so like everybody was into like rap music. I see. You know what I mean? And I I was kind of like anti established, but I guess I still am kind of anti establishment ish so mm-hmm. like i chose not to like get into that right right right. i also thought it was kind of weird because like everyone was like it was like very gang oriented okay you know what i mean like everyone's like wearing like do rags and like mm-hmm. bandanas and then people would like um they talk about like shooting things up and i always thought that was kind of dumb you know what i mean oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah and then like it wasn't until university uh where i started to get into it because of like jay-z and like he's honestly i always attribute like rap music like 50 cent and jay-z were the two two icons that um really helped me with business school like in terms of like mindset and like there's like a lot you could learn about like the the dope game and how like that related heavily to like marketing right you know what I mean? but like you didn't like i guess nobody really put that together but like they would say that like like hip-hop like 50 cent jay-z like they'd use like modern business tactics while they were like selling on the street it had to, all the principles were the same right you know what I'm saying like competitors market share setting your price points mm-hmm. you know like what's your supply demand what's your uh how your operations are going to be run right right you right. know and all that but um yeah that's my story that's my introduction to how i got into hip-hop what about you uh I would mean, you, what, would you I call it rap or hip hop? I guess both. I don't know. It's yeah. difficult. I don't I guess know. It's like hip hop's like a genre, like a like a beat style, and then like yeah. rap is like the technique. Because mm. you can rap without beats. You know, there's like rap battles. Those acapella. Yeah. So like, maybe that's the difference. I don't know. But anyways, yeah. So how'd you get into like hip hop rap? I don't remember how I got into hip hop rap, but the first thing or the first album I got was Eminem. That's okay, so maybe that's like it was. It was just because that was the first album you got. So you were like, "What? What drew you into Eminem?" I can't remember. It's been so long ago. I don't remember why. Oh, okay. I wonder if it's like because he was so different, like being like a white rapper. Maybe, but I even at that time I remember like not really knowing much about music, though. True. Yeah. I, maybe it was just like the the like shock value. Of like what he talked real about, Slim Shady. What, yeah, but it was like what he was saying was like not something people would normally say. I guess. Right, right, right. Do you remember the the first album at all? Like listening to it and like what you thought of it. Um, what I thought about it, uh, I liked it. I don't remember specifics. Like I remember listening to it as well because well, my sister's really into um, like hip hop rap music, right. so she bought those albums and I bought like Blink One Eighty Two and stuff. I should like when I listened to it, I was like, oh, it's, it's pretty good. But I don't know. There was just something about mm-hmm. there's something about like the the style of it that right. like I didn't like. I don't know. I don't know. Like I guess because like like rock music's more about like teen angst. 
You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I guess liking so. girls yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, rap music's more about, like, adult things. And, like, I just wasn't into that. You know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, um, interesting fact, I got really good at, like, being able to um, differentiate what people were saying in terms of, like, accents and stuff because of rap music. Because you had to, like... I remember when I first heard rap music, I couldn't understand what they were saying because it was so fast. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that, yes. And then my brain yeah. had to, like, learn how to listen quickly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, like, so these were things that happened, like, as a kid. Yeah. I wouldn't say that I liked rap music, but, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was in the car, it's like, okay, what is he saying? So I had to, like, pick up these techniques mm-hmm. and stuff. Um yeah, it's, it's interesting that that like, because you know like like Terry can't understand like accents at all, and I can hear it because I'm like, oh no, like a lot of these rappers they they speak in different right like ways of yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find that like with like hip hop rap music, it really pushed culture forward in terms of like the way we would say things like slang. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, but I thought it was so dumb at the time, though. That's the thing. Like, I saw it always happening. Like, all my friends would be like, yo, let's dip set. And I'm like, okay, but that's, like, the name of the rap group. But it meant, like, let's go. Right, right. At the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? And, like, um, yeah, just, just stuff like that. Like, I always thought that stuff was, like, really corny. Oh, you know? I see, I see, I see. But yeah, then, yeah. It, then it kind of became like, oh, no, that's like some secret lexicon that only certain people know. You know what I see? I see it as like being able to differentiate dialects. Mm-hmm. You know, like I use like big words, but then at the same time, I can understand what like a rap song is saying because I just see them as like different languages almost. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like it, I, it still trips me out because like because of the eclecticness of listening to different music, and I think this is like why music's so cool is like when I go to like the skate shop to go buy something like I revert to my skate roots and I'll like talk to them in skate like style mm-hmm. and then if you go to like a like a you know sports oh what, what, what are the sports stores like where you buy like the Nike store or something yeah and then it's like oh right like then you go to like urban and then it's like okay then you gotta address them in a different way you know what I mean it's like it's weird how it's like different cultures yeah you know and like music allowed you to like break through those barriers Mm -hmm. and like jump into different ways of life I guess right you know what I'm saying yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. I don't know what what are your thoughts on hip hop rap before I start like deconstructing it uh I mean, so the thing with rap when I started, I think because uh, I think that the words were not easy to catch right away. I think that's probably why I focus more on beats. Oh, okay, okay. I think that's probably oh, that makes how sense. It yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm more focused on beats and versus the lyrics itself. Because we even did that before too. Remember, like you would make beats and then I would play like guitar over them. Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. and you would like write songs using like your piano, and then the piano mm-hmm. would be like a trigger. Yeah. For like beats and stuff. Right. Yeah, you were really into beats before. Yeah. I still am. Yeah, I think <laughs> still yeah, I still now. If it's not like catchy to you, like that's why you didn't like uh the damn C D. Yeah. Because you're like, oh the beats are basic, but like I'm more of a lyricist. Exactly, so like I exactly. love but that's also why I really like rappers. Like when you're like I find it ingenious to be able to take words that like that are paired so well. So like one of the reasons why like like I get like a lot of compliments for the way I write, mm-hmm. you know. But I always attribute that to like my my analysis of rap music because they take words and they make it flow in a way that it's like it's easy for you to yeah. understand. Because yeah. like I've re- I've read so many books, right? And like all of those books are like you can get through some really dry ones, you know. And you're like, man, why did you write it like this? But it's like it's too academic, or mm-hmm. it's like the the cadence with which you're like writing is so like disjoint that right. it, I'm having a hard time reading it. You know, but then you get like really good authors that have like a, a rap style flow, and it's like when they're writing, it's it's simple for me to, even if they're using big words, it's simple for me to like read quickly because mm-hmm. the the cadence and the word choices are like um, conducive to like being able to right. read it. Well, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like Osho is really good at 
like his writing is like, oh, that's a great way to write it because he's like writing as if he's talking to you. Mm-hmm. But it turns out those are like trans- transcriptions. I didn't know that yeah, he those... didn't actually write those. No. Yeah. Is, yeah. But which makes sense though, because I was like, oh, well, the way you're writing, it's like very like colloquial. You right. Know? And and like I think that rap music really made me appreciate um, words. You know, mm-hmm. and they would say things like, uh, I think you told me this, like Tupac read the entire dictionary, or was it Eminem? He read the whole yeah, dictionary. Something like that, yeah. And then like like hip hop artists, they would like read a lot because like they had to educate themselves. Yeah. And like being able to be like linguistically talented, mm-hmm. you have to know a bunch of words and how you could put those words together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. but like, yeah. like I think like to me, uh, with the words, the words were part of the beat. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, that that was the flow that I liked. Like, when you can... Oh, okay, okay. So, do you like... Um, uh, do, you, do you like Drake at all? Because no. I find I find that with him. Like, he... I don't know, really know... Except for his newest album, Scorpion, was really good. But, like, his old albums, it's like, you weren't really talking about anything, like, too deep. Right. You know, so like a lot of your music, your your words were used to make beats, mm-hmm. you know, not in the same way. Like I was watching the masterclass thing and like Timbaland, he makes his beats starting with his, his mouth and then he'll add layers to it. Right. Not, not in terms of like that, but I mean like the, the lyric choices and like the way he's phrasing things and singing them. Yeah. Like they, they make it sound like you're listening to a beat track, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, uh I just... Like uh, I don't know, it just I wasn't focused on the word, but it, it, even with Drake, I didn't. There might be some songs I like, but I don't generally like his songs. Is is it because of like? But it, the, so that's that's the interesting part too. Okay, so now maybe I don't like the flow that he brings to it, or or like or him as a person. So like I was watching right. um, Vince Staples his mm-hmm. interview, and he was saying how like uh, for music, like if you, I thought this was really ingenious the way he like put it together. If you go to like uh, Walmart and you see mm-hmm. the images in the picture frames right that are already there somebody took those photos right yeah and we consider them a photographer but at the same time they're not like they're not like a they're not like a renowned photographer they're not mm-hmm. like a Joey L mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah and like he's saying there's levels to art right right but there's no levels to music art we only have the rock and roll rock and roll hall of fame right and that's it so like what rappers have to do is in order to make it look like they're important, mm. uh, make it look like their music is worth something, they have to look like they're rich. Right. It's like, oh, he's made yeah, a yeah. lot of money, so his music must be good, right? It has mm-hmm. nothing to do with the art. It has all to do with perception. Right. That's another thing I really liked about rap music. It's like a lot of it is perception-based, which is marketing, you know? Yeah. And I'm wondering, like, because cause like... I know a lot of people don't like Drake simply because he was like an actor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, maybe like, did that taint you in any way that he was like, no, like an actor? I don't think it was the actor. I just didn't find his music appealing to me. I guess. True. Yeah, as you were saying, like he he has some hits, but like yeah, there are hits the that whole, I do like. Yeah, but like overall, like not I don't someone know. I, the only Look forward album, to listen to yeah yeah and the only albums that I can think of that I can listen like from start to finish there's probably like three of them the right. the Take Care album okay um, I don't remember albums of the, from Eminem mainly but oh, like okay, I don't remember saying, yeah. other people's full bodies of work yeah I find that like concept albums are like the ones that you can always go back to you know like um uh Who's a good concept? Logic's got a lot of good concept albums, but I don't think you listen to Logic, right? Uh, no. So like, like there are certain like. But I didn't. Even, I don't even know about Logic. Only from you, I learned about Logic. Yeah, I think that was, a, that was an accident. I found out about Logic though. Right. But anyways, so, so like I like those albums that they have like a clear storyline, mm-hmm. and it takes you from the beginning to the end of the album as if it were like a movie. Right. And I think that's super ingenious because it's like, it's not just a bunch of random songs put together. It's like you're trying to tell a narrative, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, a lot of musicians started doing that though. Like, like Queen did that. They have concept albums. Concept albums are like really big in the rock world. What does that mean? Concept album? Yeah. 
Yeah, I just said it. It's oh. like it takes you from start to finish. It's like a narrative. Oh, like that. Like it, it's like a storyline. Uh, isn't kind of like Eminem's sort of? Uh, I don't. Like I, don't I mean, know. or his song. Like the thing I think what I liked about Eminem's song was because he had stories in each song. Right, right, right. But all right, so a, there's a concept for a song and a concept album is they have the entire CD is like a story. Like you have to listen to it to get the full story. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. like Eminem's, he's got concept songs right. where it's like this one song yeah. deals with this, this one song deals with this. Mm-hmm. But like like in Logic's, um, oh, I forgot the name, An Incredible True Story. It's the it's the story of like two spaceship two people on a spaceship and they're looking for the new earth so like it starts off as like a i think you might actually like it i might like that because it, it does so I, I didn't even sick. know that that's, oh really that, yeah i did not oh, know it's that. a thing there's uh, kendrick lamar does that kind of stuff oh that's why i really like kendrick lamar i see i see like those are the musicians that i'm like wow i could hold i can listen to the whole so like it's that that album starts off with like an intro and then it's like a dialogue between two people huh. and then the songs are playing out the movie Okay. Yeah, it's so sick. Oh wow, I just introduced it. I didn't, it I didn't know up. that. I didn't. Know oh yeah, that. you'll. I think you'll really like it. Oh. Because like, you can listen to one individual song. You're like, oh, this is a really good song. But if you listen to it in its entirety from start to finish, you're like, oh, this is a genius album. Right. You know, like there's there's like hits, obviously, but like, to take you from start to finish, it's mm-hmm. like, you're you're shaping an idea in my mind. Oh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. But it started with like like Queen and stuff. Like they would do that kind of thing. Okay. But then like, so okay, so now let's get into the actual dissection of hip hop uh, or rap music. So it all really got famous through NWA, right? Like obviously there's like origins of it, but I mean like the ones that put it really on the map was uh, NWA. Gangster rap started with NWA. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you watch Straight Outta Compton the movie, like you'll you'll see where it came from. Um, that's where Dr. Dre came from. That's where Ice Cube came from. But I think the only one that really like made it big was was Dr. Dre. Like Ice Cube started making movies. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. But like Dr. Dre is actually in the music scene. I think they said he was the first like hip hop billionaire because of all of his investments and stuff. But so if you actually dissect what it is they're talking about on Straight Outta Compton, the reason why. It was so iconic is because it had a message yeah right it was like it was talking about the struggles of like african americans in america and like what they had to deal with right and it put a face to it put a face to their struggle and at the same time it made it accessible whereas like caucasians who didn't know about this they could like get educated on the the topics at hand Mm -hmm. while also like listening to a really good song Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, but, like, hip-hop, because of where it started, which was, like, it was funded by drug money, mm-hmm. right? Because, like, these people from the streets, the only way they're going to make, they're going to have, like, studio time is by selling, like, drugs. Yeah. Right? Which is, like, illegal, and, like, you get into, like, gangsterness, and that's why hip-hop has, like, it's been associated with, like, gangster culture. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why... NWA making their first album about gangster culture, it was very like eye opening to mm-hmm. the general public because like there was no internet, so like coming out with that, you're like, wait, what? That's happening over there? You're being like abused by the police? Like we we saw it on the news, but like to really like, and and that's where like you got introduced to like lingo, yeah, right? You know the term swole, yeah. So swole came from uh, it's like a it's like an urban term. Okay. It was in. It was used in, uh, in uh, Straight Outta Compton. Oh, it, in F the Police. It was still getting swole off bread and water. And I was when I heard that, I was like, Oh wait, <laughs> I thought that was new. So like we in in today's society, like we we use these terms that we don't even understand where they originally came from. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's yeah. like or these like memes, and like if you understood where they came from, you'd have respect for them. But like, that's kind of how we are as a general society we don't know where things came from like not in terms of hip hop alone but like history right right or like where how do we get computers mm-hmm. you know and like things have been being said like nothing's new that's what I find yeah yeah like, yeah it gets now, re 
surfaced or re and, and the struggles are always the same. Yeah. You know, like I hear the same conversations about people who are currently in university as I was having while I was in university. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, no, like, yeah, the teachers never cared. Yeah, the bell curve. Yeah, it's so difficult. It's like blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's always the same narrative, you know, and they, and they think it's new. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just like when you, you heard swole, it's like still getting swole off bread and water. When I heard that, I was like, oh, I thought that was a new term, <laughs> but it's not a new term. No. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like when you go back to that, I'm like, wow, I really appreciate Straight Outta Compton. It's not like musically, it's it's not as good as today's, I would say. Like obviously it, it, it still holds itself up. Mm -hmm. It's like a good video game that you want to go back to. I see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like even this game we're playing right now, this could have been like a Super Nintendo game. Yeah. And we're, you're still like, oh, it's still cool because it holds its merit mm -hmm. as like a artistic piece. Right. Right. And then from there, like you get like Biggie and Tupac, mm -hmm. which you actually, you did a whole project on Tupac yeah. uh, in school. Is there a reason why you like Biggie over uh, Tupac versus Biggie? Uh, I think it's just because I learned more about Tupac. Uh, about his story, his upbringing, and like his parents are Black Panther, or his mom is. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. There was, these are real struggles. Yeah, you know, yeah, this yeah. is like a very honest truth, mm -hmm. and like that, like like me getting into like uh, Fifty Cent and like Jay Z as my first real like obsessions with hip hop. Yeah, I actually have to say it was probably Fifty Cent's uh, many. Uh, not many men. Yeah, you know, get rich or die trying album. Mm -hmm. All his other albums after that, like I couldn't listen to. But like that one album, I I like obsessively listened to that because that was like, that was the encompassing of business. Yeah, for me. Right. You know. Um. Anyways, so like the, those are like real truths, right? That they're actually saying in the thing, and then, mm -hmm. and then, now you're getting a lot of like empty rap. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, 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 the yeah. repeating things. Like Kanye West was another big one. Like he was he was a rapper trying to say things that like really mattered. But then what's really big right now currently is like like um, music that's not even good lyrically. It's just sonically it's really good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which has a more appeal to me though. Which which bit. which does have a more appeal to you. Yeah. And it's like what I find is like so so like sonically versus like lyrically right mm. so the people that were talking about real things they always backed up what they were saying like like right. these people like 50 cent got shot up but he had the life experience to bring these things out but then mm -hmm. in a modern society where it's like we don't we don't condone like anti you know anti-gay stuff or like um you know like like all this or like drive-by shooting it's not cool anymore mm -hmm. right but like to have somebody talk about that stuff and not like back it up then it just seems very empty it's like these are just words to you now right do you know what i'm saying but it's like but it it makes sense in the tune mm -hmm. right you're like oh, okay, make okay a lot of money right, uh, right i'm gonna shoot you up and like all this stuff but then like you hear like in person these people would never do any of these things because mm -hmm. they'd be too afraid right? right it's like they're not living the life so why are you talking about that mm -hmm. but it's because you're 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 piggybacking off of a an idea which was once created and now you're not paying true respect to it by just mimicking what was popular at the time right do you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so like um like uh what's his name charlemagne i was listening to his, his uh talk on this and like he was asked, like, what do you think about Lil Wayne's um, Lil Wayne's uh, bus getting shot up? Mm -hmm. Right? And he's like, oh, I'm glad that happened. And then the person's like, wait, what? You're, like, condoning this? He's like, no, I'm glad somebody finally did something because you hear about all this talk all the time, but, like, you never back it up. So it's like, so then why are you going to rap about it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, unless right. you're actually living the life experience, why are you talking about things you don't really know about? Mm -hmm. You know? And, right yeah right and and i think paying homage truly paying homage to what hip-hop is is understanding what the medium is it was a platform for people to speak out about what's really going on in life yeah yeah ingenious right mm -hmm. and then now it's transformed like i feel like you can't even call hip-hop and rap what it is today because it's like you're not really doing it 
Right. You're just like you're mimicking a tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not actually using the medium how it was intended to be used in the first place. Mm-hmm. Here's the mind blow. The what got me. So I'm really into like um I I don't really like J. Cole's music. Sonically it's not good for me. But like he's talking about like a lot of real things. Okay. Kendrick Lamar, love him. Love him sonically and lyrically. Mm-hmm. Um Vince Staples, sonically, lyrically, love that guy. Um these are like the new school rappers, right? But what are they talking about? They're not talking about gangster stuff. They are like Kendrick Lamar is because he experienced it, but like the whole idea is you have to move past that stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that's the, what true hip hop is. I feel like true hip hop is are those things, but what they label them as is backpack rappers. They call them like conscious, conscious rap. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And it's like, but if you actually look at like NWA, that was conscious rap. Because that was real, those are real topics. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird how we label it now as like conscious rap, but it's like, no, that's actual rap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Whereas like what Or they're getting actual, uh, I I see what you're saying, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like that was the origin of rap or hip hop, but then like, but they're, I guess they're like more, like they're, like having a more of a subcategory in a sense right and, uh, like it's become like it's, a norm that it's not it's, it's a bastardization right it's sort of like uh so martial arts yeah. so in the beginning martial arts was meant to kill people right and then they were like okay we're gonna like we want people to compete now so like we, we have to do away with all the kill moves right right okay. so it's like okay so you're not really paying homage to what martial arts actually was you should call it something else yeah it's like sports now you're not really learning how to fight mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's like hip-hop's it's not, i don't really consider it true hip-hop because this is like a concept I recently got onto because I was listening to all these like interviews and like listening to their songs and stuff. I'm like, why why do I gravitate towards like NWA mm-hmm. is like the old one or like Kendrick Lamar, or Vince Staples, uh, J. Cole, not his music, his interviews. It's because they're talking about real things. Right. Jay-Z talking about real things. 50 Cent talking about real things. Yeah. It's not gangster rap. It's like conscious rap. Yeah. It's basically what happened in their life, though, right? But that's exactly. You know, and and then now you have these like SoundCloud rap. They call them SoundCloud rappers, <laughs> right? Because they're like talking about these things that they don't really have. Like, I'm gonna get this Bentley. But it's like, bro, like, why even? So like, this is this is the crazy part. So if you listen to like um, the interviews with Kendrick Lamar, mm-hmm. um, uh, Vince Staples, like they'll say like, because like they when they started out they were young, right? So they were talking about like gangster stuff right okay. that's all they knew and then now it's like changing and then a lot of people are like oh you should go back to that gangster stuff right and and they're like so I can be back on the street which is what I was trying to leave in the first place now I'm trying to educate all of you to get out of this because mm-hmm. like you don't you don't need to be out here shooting people up makes no sense right, right, right. you know like why do we need to fight each other Right, you know, and like all this money stuff, right? Like in their interviews, they're like, like, oh, do you ball out? So like, I love this one. So like, a lot of like rappers will be like, oh, I ball out, right? Like, I, I spend a lot of money, and it's like, but why are you spending that money? It makes no sense. Like, in the back in the day, like, um, uh, with NWA, yeah. they would ball out because like they were drug dealers, so right. you made a lot of money, mm-hmm. right? But it's like, but you're balling out to make it look like you were more successful than you are. It goes back to that thing about like, it's not really about the art anymore. Mm -hmm. So they were asking like Kendrick Lamar and like uh, Vince Staples. Vince Staples is my favorite because he keeps it 100 all the time. So he's like, they're like, oh, do you ball out? Do you spend your money? I'm like, nah, man, I'm I'm too cheap. Like, what what do you spend your money on? Mortgages, rent payments, I got car notes I got to pay. And I was like, damn, bro, that is like real right there. Right. So if you listen to their music, it has nothing to do with balling out. Right. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> but that's, and we call this conscious backpack rap. Right. But it's right. not. It's like, no, these are, this is real rap in hip hop. It's not about the money. It's not about the gimmicks. It's about like poetically and lyrically providing a lesson for the next generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it, yeah. It's no different than blogs, this podcast, uh, those online sessions. We're just sharing knowledge, and that's what hip hop rap is. And that's actually why I stopped listening to like uh, rock and roll music, like 
punk rock and like post hardcore i'll still like get into it because like so, certain bands are really good but no band I, I haven't found any band that has like educated me while i've been listening to it but like i've been educated while i've been listening to like vince staples kendrick lamar right jay-z yeah like you know what i'm saying mm. fascinating yeah interesting yeah <laughs> i and, mean yeah I, I, it, it's just no like tupac too conscious backpack rap yeah like, that's why i like tupac yeah yeah conscious. i yeah it's i not, guess it's not right? I, I, know, like, I know i know i know rapper, I, but it's like no but this is like i love that people termed it conscious backpack rap and it's like that's literally we're just sharing knowledge like brenda's got a baby that song yeah he's talking about those are real things man people do get pregnant they hide it they have the baby in the bathroom they throw the baby out yeah you know people like oh man this is so woke like that's why i love people today they're like oh uh, i mean that's why i liked i think that's why i like tupac a lot like that was the topics he talked about were pretty intense yeah at the time yeah and like i love how people now like this is a mind blow if you watch that what was that show the tupac biggie where they caught the murder oh man i forgot the name but yeah yeah so like in that show i didn't know that they were 23 years old that's yeah, a they baby were, bro they were young yeah like what are you going to do at 23 years old what, what life experience but they were just talking about their experiences yeah so it's like what do you mean what life experiences no i just went through this i'm telling you about it mm-hmm. and i tell you not to do this this is craziness yeah yeah that's exactly what they're trying to say yeah and then you get now people are like oh dude that guy was like ahead of his time he was so woke and like no he was just telling you that's well, why well see loved, the thing is but, well, uh, okay. but, but that's why I loved their interviews because they they educated themselves mm-hmm. to provide a message real conscious woke actual hip hop rap music they educate themselves and they share what they've learned so mm-hmm. like in this interview uh, Tupac was talking about the Vatican right? yeah, 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 and he's like Oh, like I remember that interview. They, they just keep all their money there, and like and people are like, "Oh man, what are you talking about? Like you're 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 like ripping the Vatican. You shouldn't do that because like Catholicism, all this stuff." And he's like, "No, like that's where the, all the money is." Mm-hmm. But then I went to the Vatican personally, and I saw it, and I was like, "Oh, he was right. Yeah, he was just educating us or other people on what he knew about the world. It was the truth." Mm-hmm. So it's like when people say like. It's like it just all that shows me is how empty we are as a society. If if you're glorifying people that talk about the truth, then it's like, why? It just shows how dumb you actually are. Like, uh, like um, people are like, oh man, you know a lot. No, I just like I'm telling you like, like it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just showing you that nobody wants to know what's really going on. We'd rather be asleep. And then the people that do want to know what's going on, that tell you what's going on, they're glorified as something being more. And it's like, we don't need to glorify these people. They're right. doing what you're supposed to do. Educate yeah, yeah. yourself and build yourself a better future than what once was. Right. Yeah. Sorry, are you going to say something? Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's really why I really like hip-hop and rap. It's like... It's not about, it's not about the tones. Oh no no yeah I do remember now. Um, but I guess like that's how hip hop started or rap that's how started. it started. I, I I know I know. But then it's like you don't know sometimes what the end, like where it will go in the future, right? So it just happened to be like so that became like a cool thing in culture. Yeah, true. Yeah. For right, so then people started just doing that as a method, as just to like stay cool stay cool right like like except then they had to categorize these different things as um conscious rap and whatnot right yeah because i think but it's like you don't know where it will end up going right it just like right right, right, right. Like the, but, but, but that's what i'm saying it's like it's just a statement about our society it's like yeah our society just doesn't want these things they glorify these things because they don't do these things yeah think about what a a venerated person is like we we glorify people like the reason why we love the rock is because he's doing the things that we wish we would do but we don't do mm-hmm. if everyone was waking up at 5 a.m to get to work and like work out and like yeah. spread a positive message he wouldn't be special yeah you know if 
if everyone was doing what they're supposed to do, we wouldn't have celebrities. This, it goes back to like what J. Cole said, like, in the mm-hmm. future, I don't think people will be celebrities. I thought it was because, like, through access, you can we can all do the same things that celebrities would do. But mm-hmm. if we had, like, an actual enlightened society, like everyone's like, oh, I want, to, I want to create an enlightened society, then educate yourself first. You don't need to create anything. You just need to educate yourself on what's really going on. Because through your education, yeah. you'll spread that naturally. Mm-hmm. Like, somebody asked me a question, and I was like, no, you're wrong. It's this. And they're like, oh, shoot. I never thought of it like that. It's like, yeah, I just educated myself on it. Like, so I didn't need to change you. I just need to share my opinion when you asked. Right. When you asked. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, be the change you seek. That's what the primary goal is of hip-hop music and rap. Mm-hmm. You know, it, they say it was birthed out of struggle, and it was because there's, like, a lot of craziness you know that they yeah. had to go through yeah but the craziness isn't the point the medium is that is the more important than the message mm-hmm. the medium is telling the truth the message was oh i was poor but it doesn't matter what it is you you change the message as being you know yeah yeah it matters like that you're using the medium correctly it's like a superpower mm-hmm. you know and like you're abusing your powers, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but I guess now we can, I, I guess there's positive. I mean, I know what you mean, like dividing it up, but then now it's no, but, more but easier to find the. Totally, totally, totally. But the, the you're right, all positives, the, but the problem is miseducation. Mm-hmm. If you have people like using the power, the superpower of like, lyrical skills and like you know good beats like attractiveness to a younger generation you're misusing the power because you're educating them improperly and that's why i think you have a lot of people in society now that like want everyone in society should be like no i gotta pay my bills i gotta live you know pragmatically can't waste my time out here i'm like gonna die soon Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know these are these are things that conscious backpack rappers talk about but then if you look at like you know, there are countless people with their t- faces tattooed and their color and their hair. Like, obviously, I'm speaking about a specific someone. Yeah. But, like, um, then everyone's like, oh, man, I got to, like, it's all about, you know, making a statement and, like, speaking my mind. And, right. like, but in an ignorant way, you know what I'm saying? It's like you're, you're, yeah. you're glorifying the wrong things here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm like, you're misusing your power. Cause it's like, but that's why J Cole. J Cole's a genius. He brought those. They call them like, you know, like SoundCloud rap or mumble rap, mumble rap, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, uh, J Cole had his opener as a mumble rapper, mm-hmm. and I can't remember who the person was, but they're like, they're like, oh, why'd you pick that person to be your opener? Like, don't you know that you guys have conflicting messages? He's like, no, this is like what the youth want today, right? And I'm like. That's genius. You get them through the door with what they want, but then you leave them with what's important. Right. That's pretty good. Right? Actually. Friggin' genius. Mm. Yeah. And like, uh, there's a guy, 21 Savage. Uh, I only listen to one song, the one <laughs> okay. with uh, J. Cole on it, because like, like, not into him. Yeah. But he's like, he's in that whole like mumble rap category, right? Right. But like, his song with J. Cole is very woke. I was like, you're talking about some real things on here. That's why I like listen to it, you know? And like, but see, you're influencing a generation not by forcing them to change, but by being the change you seek. If you're if you're a woke rapper out there, and you're like, oh, I want to influence the generation, then it's like, okay, then make your stuff catchy. It doesn't right. matter if you're you have the truth, you know. Yeah, it's it matters who's gonna listen to you. Mm. You know, which I find the clever thing is about like the Socratic gamer thing is like we're playing video games, so it's like but we're talking about real things so it's like you're you're looking at the superficial i got we got you in the door with the superficial like what game are you playing oh that's a cool game i play that game too but it's like but what are you gonna leave with right you know what i'm saying yeah yeah Yeah. true um do you have anything more um like heavy before i just talk about something like superficial and light no (laughs) uh so what I found really interesting, and you should definitely check this out if you're listening to it, um, the Behind the Boards playlist. So, like, a bunch of producers. It's sort of like Elton John. Like, Elton John wrote none of his songs. 
but he created the tune, the melody, and he sang them, mm-hmm. right? And like, it's sort of like these producers. It's like they they didn't write this. They're not executing, but they're the ones who created it. They crafted it. Yeah. And like, I think that's cool with like Apple Music now. How like you can get behind the boards and like you can download specific playlists with those producers. Mm-hmm. So like Timbaland, uh, Pharrell, and Dr. Dre yeah. are the ones I listen to right now. Oh, Pharrell was another one that was just right, like that, right. like another conscious rapper. And like he wasn't, he wasn't necessarily being conscious about it, but his his energy, right? He mm-hmm. was skateboard P. Oh. Remember that? Like, he didn't... No. Like, all right, so his, he, when he first came out, his nickname was Skateboard P. Pharrell, right? Okay. The reason why is because he liked skateboarding. <laughs> so, like, uh, Rockstar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yeah, that? Remember he would that. wear... He would dress like an emo kid. Yeah. But he'd be rapping. And we were all like, what? But he was he was speaking... The reason why he was so legendary is because he was speaking honestly about what it is he liked and he did. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And I think, like, real recognized real. You know, we thought that was unique because we were all like that. We were a bunch of skater kids that like, I do like rap music, but I don't dress like with baggy pants and like, I don't shoot things up. But Skateboard P was like, not about that. Like nerd, you know, the name nerd. Uh, in, oh, yeah. Like nerd. His yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's an acronym for no one ever really dies. He was trying to educate you on stuff that he knew about. Mm-hmm. And that's true rap. That's true hip hop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, any final thoughts? Uh, That's why I thought I was so excited about this. Oh, topic, oh yeah. Was, yeah. What was, you were like, saying oh, earlier, so like, you didn't, yeah, like, you, like, the whole beach thing was like, like, I was. Uh, sorry, sorry. Quick, just a quick pause. The reason why I was so excited about this topic is because, like, obviously, like, you know, like, oh, just another Asian kid listening to, like, hip hop music, you know, like another Eddie Wong. You know, but like, no, no, there's a reason why I like this music. Mm-hmm. Like, everything I do is chosen for a specific thing. It's like, I'm not, like, s- like asleep as I make these decisions. And I thought that was important. That's why I thought this this podcast was important, because, like, that is the stereotype. It's like another Asian rapper, rap fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, no. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> but I mean, it dealt with the struggle. Like, obviously, like, Asian people were migrants, immigrants, sorry. And then, like they associated with like that urban culture because they felt like they were disenfranchised too yeah etc yeah, etc et that, that's why it became so big within the asian community yeah. but i'm like no i'm not like i like other things too i'm just like explaining why i like hip-hop mm-hmm. music all right what are you gonna say uh no i, I mean it, no did we already mention that like the whole beats thing and how was i was like i was more focused on that that's why yeah. i followed in whichever like so like for instance, like it started with Dre from yeah. like all, Eminem's album was all Dre stuff, right? Then when Eminem yeah, made his own crazy, beats, yeah. I would look for his stuff that 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 he had made. Right, 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 right. I find that really cool. Like I didn't even think like yeah. only now did I like find out about this because mm-hmm. I was I was all about lyricists, right? I had no idea. Like I didn't even think about the beat portion of it. But, like, it's opened up yeah. a whole new world for me to explore. It's like, <laughs> oh, now I can go find out, oh, I didn't know you produced this. I didn't know you produced this. Right, right. And then you just find a bunch of music that you like because you're like, oh, I actually really like this producer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah. And then usually producers work with other artists that are like-minded. So it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, Dre was the one who found M.M., right? So then, yeah. Like, and then whoever he found after that, like, they're all, like, kind of, like, uh, Dre, Dre influenced a lot of like conscious rappers like Kendrick Lamar was influenced heavily by Dre yeah yeah you know so it's like Dre's got like a crazy roster behind him he's got Eminem 50 Cent Kendrick Lamar <laughs> uh, Snoop Dogg I mean he did something Tupac. the thing with even yeah yeah the thing with even Eminem is like he was the one that's like like he didn't listen to anyone else because it's a it's a white rapper right Right, right, right. And he broke that stereotype. That's true, yeah. You know what's interesting about um, Dr. Dre and, like, the Dr. Dre Eminem thing? Mm. Like, the sidekick whole thing? Yeah. That started with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Oh. Yeah, I was listening to the first songs, and it was, like, they were, like, Batman and Robin. Right. I had no idea. And then, like, and then now it's, like, his new Robin is Eminem. (laughs) Yeah. You know? And, like, 50 Cent's Robin is Eminem. Right. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you have that whole, like, click thing. 
Yeah, yeah that's it's, kind of cool. It's quite interesting, actually. That stuff. And then I really like rappers who like transcend beyond like duality. Mm-hmm. So like you have like like um, like Jay Z is with uh, Puff Daddy and Puff Daddy's camp, as well as um, Dr. Dre's camp. Mm-hmm. But like. It's like the whole West Coast, East Coast thing, right? Yeah. The feud. But, like, I like those rappers that are, like, in the middle, like, like Jay-Z. Like, he's like, no, man, I'm from New York. It's like, I, I like... Right. I, like, roll with both of you. Because he's got songs with both camps, you know? I think that's important. It's, like, just work with people who are talented. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, there's a lot of history to, to hip-hop. Yeah. There's a lot of, like... Uh, I heard this. And I thought this is pretty true. It's like uh, when when you think of like the mafia, mm-hmm. uh, hip hop culture, gangster rap transcended the mafia. Because we used to talk about the mafia and like, oh yeah, they're in the movies and stuff. Yeah, right? and they're like a big organized crime. But it's like if you actually look at the influence of like rap music mm-hmm. in businesses, you know, there's right. like record labels, right? And then like from the record labels, you go into like more legitimate businesses, like. Uh, Nick Cannon is the creative director, I think, of uh, uh, The Source. Okay, yeah. Right, I think it was The Source. Or is it like Radio Shack? Radio Shack. Uh, oh. Yeah, creative director. But he doesn't talk about it. He makes a lot of money doing that, but he doesn't talk about it because it's like, it's not in line with the whole like hip-hop rap culture. Mm-hmm. But he's like, no, you got to like diversify your income and stuff. You got to make smart money moves. Right, right, right. Interesting. Anyways, yeah, cool topic. So we're going to check out uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We're going to peer into that world. I'm hearing a lot of good things about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's Vicious birthday, Wednesday. Oh, okay. Happy birthday. Yeah. 33, that's when Jesus died. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there's there's a lot of people that 33 is like important to um, Buddha. He was like 30 or something like that. I don't know. 30 is a good year for uh, being woke, apparently. Or dying? Or dying. Yeah. <laughs> or becoming like a legend because Buddha was like around 33. Right. Jesus was around. Jesus was 33 when he died. Right. If he existed. Right. Yeah. So it's a good year. All right. Till next time. <laughs> Take it easy. Later.